when you are a mom to be or a new mama, it can feel like you just need all the things and those things can add up so quickly and end up being pretty expensive. Hey, I'm Amber. Welcome back to my channel or if this is your first time here, welcome. Purchasing things for your baby can feel so overwhelming and it definitely can add up so quickly. So if you are on a budget or if you are just a little more minimal and frugal kind of like I am, I have put together a quick list for you of ways that I saved money as a new mom. Hopefully this will help you do the same and also save you just like a little bit of research time. My first tip is to utilize baby registry discounts. I don't know if every single website does this, but I know Amazon and I believe Babylist does this. When you create your registry, you put in when your baby shower date is and then you can get a discount on any items that you don't receive after that date has passed. So if you're not even planning on having a baby shower, I would still go ahead and create a registry and just put in a random date. Or if you feel like there are some items that maybe don't feel like appropriate to put on your registry, put them on there anyway, just in case you can get a discount on them. For example, I put our car seat on the registry. It definitely was on the pricier side and I didn't actually expect anyone to get it for us. My grandma actually did end up purchasing it for us, but I put it on there just so that if no one did, I could get a discount on it so that we could get it ourselves. And this can definitely help you save a little bit of money here and there on products that you otherwise would purchase at full price. If you've been watching my videos, the second tip might not come as a surprise to you, and that is to cloth diaper your baby. I actually filmed a whole series on cloth diapering, why you should do it, how you should do it. So if you want to check out one of those videos, I would start with this one. I'll put it right up here and in the description box down below. But long story short, all babies need diapers, and when you consider the fact that most babies are going to be wearing diapers for like two, possibly three years, that is a lot of disposable diapers that you are gonna have to purchase every couple weeks or every month, depending on how many you get at one time. So cloth diapering can save you a ton of money. It is a little bit of an upfront investment, but then that is it. You're done, you have those diapers, and all you have to do is wash them every two to three days. I think it's safe to say that for most people, that initial investment is probably gonna be somewhere between like two and $500, depending on what brand you use and if you get brand new diapers or like secondhand diapers. But if you're using disposable diapers for as long as your baby is wearing diapers, you are more than likely going to spend well over $500. So cloth diapering can definitely save you loads of money and it is better for the environment. Before we get on to my next tip, if you are enjoying this so far and you like kind of crunchy motherhood, healthy living type videos, please just hit that subscribe button down below. I would love to see you around here more often and it really helps out my channel. My third tip for saving money is to make your own baby food, especially if you're planning on purchasing the more like organic baby food brands because those are quite expensive and you get like a pretty good amount, but the problem is they generally are only good for 24 to 48 hours after opening them. And what I have found is at least at my son's age, he's currently nine months, he cannot eat that much even in like a 24 to 48 hour time span unless that's all I give him, which I usually like to try to give him a couple to a few different things in the day. Like I don't like to just give him the same exact thing two to three times a day. So if you're planning on doing that, maybe it would be okay, but if you like to give your baby some variety, then you're probably gonna end up throwing a lot of that baby food away. But even if you're not planning on purchasing those brands, it is so, so easy to make your own baby food. It's actually way more convenient than I ever would have thought as well. 
All you need is a blender or a food processor. More often than not, I just take a little bit of what I'm already cooking and I'll just blend it up or like I said, throw it in the food processor depending on if I want it to be completely smooth or like a little bit chunky. I also have gotten the habit of just having certain foods on hand at all times for my son, like avocado, yogurt, oatmeal, sweet potato, things like that. And then when I go to the grocery store, in addition to getting those, I'll usually pick out one or two extra things for him to have during the week. It's great, it's super easy, you can just steam it, blend it, process it, whatever, while you're cooking breakfast or dinner. And then you can store that in the fridge, usually for five days to a week and then you can freeze whatever you don't use in like little ice cube trays for future use. I've actually had a lot of fun doing this, like it's fun making little recipes for him, and I love knowing exactly what he's eating and you don't have to worry about like added sugar or sodium or preservatives or anything like that, and on top of that, you will save money. My fourth tip is to thrift for your baby. I was completely grossed out by thrifting before I had a baby. So if that is you, just stay with me here because I know how it can feel to go get something that you know somebody else once owned. But I have actually been so pleasantly surprised by baby or child specific thrift stores. You don't have to go to Goodwill if you are a little bit grossed out by thrifting. In my experience at least, a lot of like baby specific thrift stores will only accept items that are in good quality. And I've actually found a lot of products that are brand new with tags, which makes sense because a lot of times, especially if you have like a baby shower, you get way more than what you need for your baby. So it makes sense that some people just end up a few years later taking those things off to a thrift store. My next tip is to not go overboard with toys. It can feel so tempting to wanna to get your baby like the toys with all of the bells and whistles, but a lot of times, I've found that he gets bored of those a little bit faster because usually you just like push a button, it does the thing and then that's it. And those are usually made of plastic, which is not going to last as long. So I instead opted for toys that are more simple and that will last longer because they're well made. They're toys that hold his attention longer because they're more geared towards getting your baby or child to think like, what can I do with this thing as opposed to what does this thing do? Another hack also is to utilize items that you have around your house. Like for example, a wooden spoon is a great option. Babies are curious about everything. So something that seems really simple and mundane to us could just be absolutely fascinating for them. You can give your baby just a wooden spoon or if they're big enough to like sit up on their own, you can give them a pot and a wooden spoon and they can like bang on that and make some noise and I'm positive they will be entertained for a little bit. Okay, my last tip might sound a little bit counterintuitive, but that is to make sure that you are purchasing good quality items, even if they're gonna cost you a little bit more. I personally feel like it's better to save up money and get something that's good quality and that's going to hold up and last, as opposed to going cheap and purchasing something that is gonna fall apart in a couple of months and that you're going to need to purchase again and then just keep on like repeating that cycle. Whether it be like gear, like strollers and cribs or toys or clothes, I feel like more often than not, you get what you pay for. So as much as possible, go for quality over quantity. And if you do that, I think that you usually can save money in the long run. Okay, so that is all I have for you. I was personally able to save a good amount of money using these tips because I am more on the frugal side and on top of that, when I first had my son, I had just recently been laid off, so we were on a budget as well. If you did find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are looking for more ways to save some money, check out this video right here, which is about five 
five common household items that you can swap to save you money and also they are more eco-friendly, which I am all about. I hope you are having a beautiful rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.